Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing what is the right size turbo for your engine. Today we're going to be discussing all things snail, turbocharger, whatever the street name is of these bad boys. And with me I've got Chris. Introduce yourself, Chris. Hey people, how's it? Hope you guys are all well. I am Chris. I am the owner of Turbo Direct South Africa. We are the first and only turbo manufacturer in South Africa. We hold all the agencies for the OEM turbocharger brands under one roof and we're here to educate you guys. What are turbochargers? There are so many... <laughs> <laughs> what is a turbocharger? There are so many myths. Here, we are here to bust them today. We've got twin scroll, we've got internally gated, we've got noises, we've got all these weird things. What is a turbocharger and what does it do on your engine? Chris, you elaborate for us. Okay, let's have a look. This is what a turbocharger looks like. The engine farts, it goes in there, air comes in here, and happiness comes out there. Happiness, we love happiness. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, all the exhaust gases that your engine burns comes out of the exhaust, gets rooted into this housing, which turns this wheel, which sucks through air, compresses it, forces it back out of here into your engine. This is essentially an air pump. That's what a turbocharger is. How do we choose the right size turbo? I'm sure you've heard a lot of horror stories. What do you think, Chris? It's a very daunting task, could be a very daunting task, and very quickly it could lead you down the wrong road where you spent a lot of money and the result does not meet your expectations. First of all, you need to decide what are you building? Are you building a drag car, a thousand meter sprint car, a drift car, a spinning car, or is this just a street car that you wanna add power to? You wanna make 300 kilowatts or whatever power you, you have in mind because you belong to a club or you, you frequent motorsport events and you wanna be part of all this action. So you've decided you wanna build a street car and you have a specific vehicle. You need to decide how much power you wanna make and first of all, can the engine accept boost? which is Gary's area of expertise. Gary, elaborate more I on the think, engine. I think the first part is to have a realistic expectation of what you are trying to achieve. That is rule number one. After that, let's just discuss briefly what an engine does. An engine sucks in air, gets injected with fuel, explodes inside the cylinder, and spits it out. A turbocharger is adding efficiencies to that. So is the engine capable of handling boost? That's a very good question. Some are, some aren't. What do you have to do to achieve a certain power goal? Do you need to upgrade the engine? Can the engine internals handle the boost? What do you think? 100%. If you've got an engine that is normally aspirated, that does not come out from the, fab, from the factory with the turbocharger, mm. and you want to now add boost to this, first of all, consider the fact that the engine's internals, the conrods, the pistons, and all the things inside are not designed to handle that kind of power. So will the engine be reliable or will it break? And you need to ascertain whether or not this is going to be possible or not. Speak to guys like Gary, who's got a lot of a wealth of knowledge and a lot of experience building these kind of engines, turbocharging these kind of engines, and he will tell you what parts you need to replace internally to prepare that engine for boost. All right, guys, we've touched very briefly on engine prep. You get so many different kinds, sizes, and compression ratios of engines which might need a compression ratio drop which might not, that are normally aspirated. You might have a turbocharged engine which you want to add a bigger turbo to. Yeah. We cannot cover all of these things in a short video. So what I'd suggest you do is speak to a professional who does this for a living and has got a wealth of knowledge and experience like Gary. So as you've seen online, we've done uh, quite a few different uh, builds. We've done from South African plastics, normally aspirated, to turbocharged buckies with a turbo in the back, the wrong engine, the wrong gearbox in the wrong car, making it all work, top secret GTRs. I think the best thing for your bespoke solution is to get in contact with us. The link's in the bio. Turbo cost. You've seen turbos online for 200 bucks. What a bargain. Ooh. Don't be stupid. <laughs> they go from cheap, they go to expensive. What are the differences? Why? Chris, elaborate. Hey guys, this is a it's a very interesting topic and it's very important as well, especially when you're choosing the right turbocharger. We manufacture our own turbos. We design and we machine our own components. We are directly involved with the finished product from start to finish. And let me tell you, it takes a lot of time. 
It's easy to copy a product. It's very easy to copy a product. But to design something, build a physical component, test it, find the faults, back to the drawing board, redesign, remanufacture, retest, until you get it right, you land up looking at your R&D costs and they are massive. Mm -hmm. Big companies, OEM companies out there that do this and have been doing it for OEMs like Porsche, Borg Warner manufacture for Porsche, always have, um, and all the other OEM vehicles which have reliable turbocharger setups are well versed in this. As a South African manufacturer, we've started to double and dabble in comparison to the big guys, but we know all too well how much it costs. There's aerospace grade materials, there's extremely high precision machining involved, and there's a lot of time. And are you prepared to put your name behind a turbocharger when it fails? How do you support that turbo? So what I would suggest you do is look for a company that has a product that they support that they've got repair components, that have got knowledge, that have got a dealer network like Very Gary important. that can support the product, they can fault find the product and they can put you on the right path. Mm. Yes, there are expensive turbos out there and yes, they are worthwhile, but that's why we're in existence today because we found a product that is more affordable, just as good if not better in certain areas, locally manufactured, fully repairable, fully stocked, and we have dealer network like Gary who has the product on the shelf that can look after all your needs from A to Z. So how long should a turbocharger last, Chris? Gary, that's uh, it's open to interpretation. You must understand, a turbocharger is designed to last as long as the engine. Now, OEMs like, for example, Borg Warner and Garrett on, and, and any of the other OEMs design a turbocharger to last 150,000 kilometers or more. But it depends on how you service the engine. Remember, the turbocharger uses the same oil as the engine. If you neglect to service your engine, you neglect to service your turbocharger. 100%. Have you replaced your air filter? If not, you are taking a chance because that's the last step. Mm -hmm. That's the last component which protects the compressor wheel, that little wheel there, in your turbocharger. So if you do not replace your air filter and, for example, it fails and stones or dust gets sucked through the air filter, it comes into contact with your turbo. So what quality oils are you running in the vehicle? 100%. And I mean, you, you're a, a, a Motel agent. You are fully stocked with the Motel range of product, yeah. which is OEM on Porsche. I mean, you can tell us more about the Motel products you, you, you stock. So we are fully stocked here at the Machining Man. The, the lubricants that go through an engine, through the turbocharger, that's very important to note because a turbocharger is usually lubricated by the engine. All those lubricants are key to the longevity of a turbo. In short, a turbocharger should last the, the lifetime of the engine. However, this is open to a driver abuse, the type of uh, work that the turbocharger is doing, the type of boost levels that you are running? Hot shutdown. So if, for example, you're running a turbocharger, you're in a hurry, you're caning the car, you get to an appointment because you're, it's an emergency or whatever, and you shut the engine <laughs> off, and you have what we call a, a hot shutdown, that can shorten the life of the turbocharger. So how you look after the vehicle, how you drive it, how you abuse it, will also contribute to the length and the reliability of the turbo mm. and, the, and the engine. Mm. All right, guys, so we've got to the segment of the video that you guys have tuned into this video for in the first place turbocharger sizing. We need to now decide what size turbo <laughs> is right for your vehicle. Is this going to fit on my Cummins diesel? Is that going to fit onto a Fiat Uno Fire 1300? It's actually 1100, right? Gary. What is the right size, Chris? Let's delve into this <laughs> and get cracking. Now that you've seen Small, large, and everything in between. This is the part of the segment where we get to choose the basic sizing of a turbocharger to the size of your engine. This is quite a critical step, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Once again, we've, just, we've, we've briefly overviewed on the sizing, on the application, and what you want to do. So let's delve into sizing. Now we're going to talk about four-cylinder application. So, Chris, what do you think is the best and most suitable turbo for four-cylinder? Right, guys, so before we delve into that, we need to talk very, very briefly about a little bit of mathematics. You've got to understand airflow, because remember, a turbo is an air pump. How much airflow do you want? So, 
We've decided on a streetcar, everyday car, we're gonna go with 300 horsepower. It's not a crazy build, it's a mild streetcar application, and we're looking for a turbocharger that can produce 300 horsepower. Now, a rule of thumb, do not choose a turbo that is maxed out producing your target horsepower because you're going, be, you're going to be running that turbo at its maximum all the time. It's going to be generating unnecessary amounts of heat and it's going to be overworking itself. Try and choose something to build a bit of reserve into. So for a four cylinder application, we will use what we have over here. It's a 50 pound per minute of airflow for every 10 pounds per minute of airflow equals 100 horsepower. This turbocharger at maximum can produce 500 horsepower. We only want 300 horsepower, which is just above half of what this turbocharger can provide, giving us a low boost, low heat, and very reliable result. And now we talk about the things that really excite me and get my blood going. Five cylinder and six cylinder builds. These are builds that we do extensively here in the shop. V6s, uh, Toyota 2JZs, Nissan RB26s, BMWs, this really is amazing. So these start off from around 500 horsepower up to about 850, that's our average client's needs. And uh, Chris, tell us what you suggest for that kind of build. Okay, so we're stepping it up a little bit here, guys. Typically when Gary's finished with these type of engines that are requiring 500 to 750, 850 type horsepower, he's now gone and built an engine, he strengthened the engine, he's got forged pistons and rods in there, and he's done all the magic that he's well known for. But the turbocharger now also changes. The requirement for additional airflow, remember, 10 pounds per minute of airflow equals 100 horsepower. So you're looking for, if you're building an 850 horsepower capable setup on a six cylinder or five cylinder, you're looking for a turbo that can flow 80 to 85 pounds per minute of airflow. And we have just what you need. This specific turbocharger here is a streetable setup which will flow 80 pounds per minute and it will basically produce 800 horsepower while still maintaining a relatively decent response slowdown for street use. So you can put your wife in the car, obviously turn the boost down, you don't want to give her the full 850, and uh, you can let her go Why to not? the shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she throws it at could. the scenery. <laughs> My wife loves horsepower. Well, then you can get, turn the boost up, baby, show her how the boost controller works. Um, if you're looking for, once again, remember the rule of thumb, guys, if you're, if you're building an 850 horsepower type car where the driver will be using 850 horse most of the time, put a bigger turbo on there that can cater for, let's say, 1,000 horsepower so that you're not running the turbo at maximum all the time. Now things get serious. V8, V10, V12. Big numbers, big horsepower. Chris, let's... Uh, Let's get into this. You've got a bit of experience, turbocharged V8s. We do, we do. We have experience with uh, turbocharged V10 Viper as well. It is exciting <laughs> and it's dangerous because man, if you put a small pump with low horsepower expectations on a V8, you have traction problems. And yes, while it's uh, a lot of fun, it's also dangerous, but you can go various ways. Let's say, for example, you've got, remember guys, street car. We're not talking about drag cars here. We're talking about street cars. So you have a box-shaped Corolla with a 1UZ, okay? Now that's a Lexus 4-liter V8 or um, one of the geysers of the Lexus engines that you've now put into this Corolla and you want to turbocharge it. You've got two options. Let's say, for example, you want 600 horsepower. It's easy. Get a 60 pound per minute of airflow turbo, Build a manifold, obviously Gary will do the fabrication for you, mount the turbocharger and off you go and we would recommend our 80 pound or 90 pound turbocharger for that so you've got some in reserve. Later on you might want to turn the boost up and start smoking tires or whatever the case might be. So you've got a single turbo V8. Now let's say for example you want, I mean how many times have your clients come to you Gary and said, but I want an all out car. I want more power captain. <laughs> Thousand plus horsepower. <laughs> right, so let's say you've got a Chev 350 or a uh, even a 1UZ, a 4-litre V8, and you want 1,000 horse. You don't want to push a single turbocharger to its limits all the time, like we've already discussed. So you can go for a large frame turbocharger, but remember, with power comes lag. Mm. Now, the bigger the turbo, the laggier it's going to be. In other words, the longer it's going to take to spool up and come into boost. So maybe you want to go on a smaller type V8 with two turbochargers. Now this opens up 
a realm of possibilities. Gary will be able to provide you with the fabrication required for parallel turbo, which is one turbo on each V. That's two separate manifolds, and obviously he will do his magic to join the airflow into one, into a single throttle body, or we could go sequential, or we could go compound. That's for another video, which we will delve into soon. But you have the option of putting two 80 pound turbos together and having a maximum power of up to 1600 horsepower, or drop the boost slightly and run a safe 1000 horsepower with a lot more in reserve. All right, guys, so we've spoken at length about turbochargers, and I'm sure you guys get the, the gist of 10 pounds per minute of airflow equals 100 horsepower. But what else is there? There's a lot more. We haven't spoken about intercoolers, blower valves, wastegates, or any of those things. Gary is the master fabricator, and he does all of the designs, the placement of the turbo under the hood, and all the geographical planning. Gary, tell us more about your preferences and how you do things. So space constraints always uh, always an issue. Thereafter... What are you looking to do under the bonnet? We're looking to make it simple, and uh, we're looking to make it fast. So we get internally gated turbos, we get externally gated turbos, what is the difference? So for ease of cost, we get internally gated turbos. These here come with a poppet valve or a swing valve. This opens up a waste, uh, internally gated wastegate here, which relieves the pressure and which controls the boost. We've also then got other turbochargers as the horsepower increases. We've got externally gated uh, turbochargers. There are space constraints once again with this, and uh, this all needs to be taken into account when doing a bespoke build. Thereafter, uh, we have to then talk about intercoolers, boost piping, inlet manifolds, injectors, but this is a story for another day. We just wanted to give you a brief overview of what it takes and what size is the right size for your engine. So if you've got any further queries or information that you would require from us, please hit us up in the link below and uh, give us a shout. And that's it for turbocharging. Chris from Turbo Direct, thank you so much for coming. Absolute pleasure, Gary. Thanks for having me. Remember, guys, you've just touched on the surface of this. There's a lot more to come. Post in the comments down below. Let us know what you think. Gary, thanks for having me. Happy boosting. Like, subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe!